As the NBA season progresses, many teams are eyeing the playoffs and forcefully pursuing an NBA title. Meanwhile, plenty of other teams have already accepted their fate that they won't be competing in the playoffs this season, and those management groups have their eyes on the NBA draft and the prospects that will be available within it. Amongst those prospects, one prospect that remains more polarizing than most is Purdue Boilermaker center Zach Eady. At 7'4 and over 300 pounds, Eady's been the most dominant player in college basketball for two consecutive seasons. The Canadian-born big man stat lines have been nothing short of sensational. This season, he led the entire NCAA in scoring with 24.6 points per game, finished second in rebounding, and first in offensive rebounds. He's also an analytics god at the NCAA level. He led the Big Ten Conference in efficiency metrics including effective field goal percentage, true shooting percentage, and free throws, and has the highest player efficiency ratings and box plus minus in NCAA history. If you just look at the numbers, you'd think that ED was the second coming of Yao Ming, who was the first overall pick in 2002. And if ED was playing this way 20 years ago, he would undoubtedly be a lottery pick at the very least. However, the NBA has changed so much over the past couple of decades that now there are questions whether this dude can even play in the league. Why is that, you ask? Well, let's take a look. The obvious and most surface-level reason is Edie's playing style. In college, Edie plays primarily in the low post with his back to the basket. Though plenty of the greatest centers in NBA history dominated in the low post, nowadays teams rarely use centers in this way. The best centers in the league like Nikola Jokic and Joel Embiid have skill sets that allow them to play further away from the basket and score in the lane by using footwork, dribble moves, and cuts in order to score. On top of that, both these stars are extremely capable of stretching out defenses and shooting three-pointers, something that Edie doesn't do very well and likely never will do in the NBA. Floor spacing so critical in today's NBA. If you watch a team like the Celtics who are currently the best team in the league, they often play in offensive sets where all five players line up outside the three-point line. And since their centers like Kristaps Porzingis and Al Horford are threats from downtown, defenses need to spread out in order to guard them. This spacing forces big centers who are usually the best rim protectors out of the paint, which opens up driving lanes for guards and wings. Milwaukee, for example, utilizes Brooke Lopez as a three-point shooter, which allows Giannis to drive to the basket and score points at will. And if Lopez's defender doubles on Giannis, he can easily kick it out to the three-point shooting Lopez for a wide-open shot. Since Edie can't shoot the three-pointer, he'll only fit into certain offensive schemes. But contrary to the popular narrative, there are still centers that play big roles in the NBA that can't shoot at all. Players like Rudy Gobert, Clint Capella, Ivica Zubac, Steven Adams, and Jakob Pertl remain NBA role players and some even start for their teams offensively. But still, these players share attributes that stylistically separate them from Edie. For now, let's just stick to offense and look at how these players contribute and assess whether Edie could continue to contribute in a similar capacity. So for starters, all of these players have massive bodies and can come to the top of the key or to the elbow to set strong screens for ball handlers. With Edie's size, he'll be extremely effective in this capacity. His size alone will enable him to become one of the best brick wall screeners in the league with the right training. And while none of these guys can pop out and hit outside shots, they all share the ability to roll to the basket and finish plays with layups and dunks. Now, the NBA players I mentioned all have superior twitch muscles and explosiveness to run to the rim and finish with dunks. Edie, on the other hand, is a little slower and more clunky, which will limit his abilities in some capacity. However, Edie's game is not just power-based, there might be a perception that since Edie is so massive, he uses brute force to dominate, but his offensive game is so much more refined than that. Edie has exceptional body control, footwork, and hands that combine with his strength, making him extremely difficult to stop around the rim. And let's not forget, this dude is 7'4", with a near 8-foot wingspan. Combine all this, and you have a player that, with proper coaching, can cause problems on offense against plenty of opponents. On top of that, Edie brings two key attributes that'll make him a major problem on offense. First, his ability as an offensive rebounder will give his team plenty of extra possessions offensively, which is extremely valued by every team in the NBA. Per possession, as long as he can get up and down the floor in time, Edie should become an elite NBA offensive rebounder. 
Additionally, his size, strength, hands, and body control will make him very tough to stop without fouling. And Edie's an extremely reliable free throw shooter for a center who should only continue to improve. While his inability to shoot and his lack of explosiveness will definitely limit his upside, in the right scheme and with the right group of players around him, Edie likely has the skills and frame to become an offensive threat at the highest level, likely in a bench role. However, he'll be even more limited on the defensive end of the floor. It's a crazy thought, I know. Historically, a coordinated 7-foot-4-inch, 300-pound center would be considered a star defensive prospect, but times have changed in the NBA. Now 7-footers have defensive responsibilities beyond low-post defense, shot blocking, and rebounding. We mentioned that Edie, though strong as hell, lacks those quick twitch muscles and explosiveness that players like Rudy Gobert, Clint Capella, and Ivica Zubats have. For this reason, Edie, though adequate, actually isn't an elite shot blocker, though his size alone will definitely force players to adjust their shots. These mobility limitations will likely cause major issues for teams that need him to switch guard the perimeter and play and drop coverage. As mentioned, teams nowadays can bring five players out to the perimeter and most centers can shoot threes. That means that Edie can't just sit underneath the basket and attempt to block shots. His opponents would be able to exploit him if he couldn't at least guard the perimeter in some capacity. And with his large, hunkering frame, the likelihood that he'll become even adequate in that regard is unlikely. In drop coverage, guards will attack him on switches and will easily get to their spots for open jump shots. If they bring him far enough out to the perimeter, they'll blow right by him for layups, and if opponents send help, ball handlers nowadays are trained to find the man in a split second. The right coach and the right system will probably figure out how to maximize his size and fit him into a defensive system. Jokic, for example, is an explosive one bit, yet the Nuggets play exceptional defense. But there's no denying that against some top teams, ED being one of the least mobile players in the league will get exploited. But let's all keep in mind that this guy is a legit athlete. He didn't start playing basketball until his sophomore year in high school and played primarily hockey and baseball before that. Taking that into consideration, his trajectory to date has been impressive, and we shouldn't underestimate his ability to keep improving. Maybe we'll be the ones eating crow at the end of the day when Needy becomes a star player in the NBA. But we want to know what you guys think. Where should Zach Eady go in the NBA draft? And how good will he become in the NBA? Let us know in the comments section, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more sports news and insights. Thanks for watching, and see you next time!